that's it. We don't put in the miles to bring you good content. Today we're going about 130 miles and we're traveling to Cassine Firearms in Flat Rock, North Carolina. And we're going to meet with Greg Mooney. He's the owner and operator of Cassine. Now, if you're not familiar with Cassine Firearms, you should be. Well, at least at the end of this video, you will be. All right, guys, thanks for joining us back out here at the Range Report. And here we are in East Flat Rock, North Carolina at Cosum Firearms with our friend Greg Moody. Greg is going to show us some of the amazing 1911s that these guys produce here in-house. Uh, and as the, the word above me says, if you want more, you got to get more. This is more. Well, Greg, thanks a lot for uh, letting us come out here today and take a look at what you guys do. Uh, we'll be running a lot of B-roll footage over here, too. You'll see the factory. It's pretty damn cool. But uh, let us know what we got going on here. So as I told you earlier, you know, we started in, in the single stack um, when we first started doing this. And like this is a 5-inch uh, single stack. But, you know, the idea was to make it a classic look and feel with the traditional 1911 side panels. And the um, nice thing is that it has all the functionality of a single stack. But it has the, um, the the recoil mitigation that a double stack or a polymer grip with metal upper break gives you. And um, so we started with single stacks and then slowly but surely got pulled, you know, into into double stacks. You know, so a single stack is built like this with a, you know, aluminum or, or, or steel frame with a polymer grip that just fits together. And now that's your traditional 1911, you know, 1911 frame, you know, as, as most people would recognize it. Double stacks are exactly the same thing. It's just they're a little bit wider, you know, to accept the double stack magazine. All right, so, so we're getting back to the difference between the so, 1911 and, and 2011 double stack frame. Right, exactly. And so we call ours, the single stack, we call it a COS, you know, COS 11 and the double stacks COS 21s. And um, so as we migrated into double stacks, you know, classic, you know, commander, four and a quarter, this got aluminum frame, polymer grip, magwell, um, but as a nine millimeter, um, they're, they're, really fun to shoot. They shoot very flat. Uh, the, the whole concept behind these guns is that the, um, the energy doesn't go into the grip so when you shoot they act more like a piston. They go back and forth rather than flipping up where that's where you're coming back down. And so you can imagine, especially in a burst, a two or three shot burst, they're very accurate from that standpoint. And with the with the weight of the trigger being on here, about three, three and a half pounds. Exactly. And it has one of the shortest resets that I've ever felt on any 1911 platform. You're going to be able to pump out the shots quick. Now, when Greg handed me this earlier today, I was taken by surprise. I almost thought I was picking up a kel <laughs> because the weight of this thing, it, it just, it felt so much lighter because of the polymer grip frame that's on here but the feel is fantastic i mean it's got a Thank fantastic you. feel on here the stippling job they do is just outrageous but ergonomically speaking you know i'm used to shooting 1911s i got a bunch of them and when you feel that weight in your hand it, it just presents itself differently this feels more of a push out and go to work kind of gun uh, the feel is just fantastic, and every every feature on here is just. I, I didn't know they were polymer polymer grip until you handed it to me. I was blown away by it. They're they're crazy, and then you got of course you can order these with this optic ready with the optic ready on it. Now I know that there's something special about the optic plate. Yeah, so uh, we we a lot of people ask, what do you prep for? Which optic? We don't. We prep for the C and H plate. The C and H precision weapons plates are the plates we recommend because they're the thinnest on the market. They use a cross cut pattern in their in their in their cut, which then the match is on the plate. So when you set it down, that cross cut holds that optic plate in place. Four screws hold it to the slide, and then the optic. Then they have a patented um, T nuts they call them that go up into the optic, which gives you full screw engagement. So the optic gets to sit almost like a direct mount and um, uh, super secure with the cross cut. So we did that, then we made a cover plate to match it so that what we could send a gun cover plate, not everybody's ready to go put an optic right on. 
They just know they want it down the road. Right. So our cover plate, the rear sight matches the rear sight on all C&H plates. So the nice thing is once you put an optic on, you still can go to um, iron sights. If something happens, something um, optic goes down, you're still spot on with your iron sights. So and now while you've been, been explaining that, I'll be running a still photo up here of yep. what the plate and on the look under underneath it looks like. You know, think of it like a Lego. You know, you get a lot of optics, you know, plates that you're putting on guns, the surface is machined flat and still when you have four holes, you put your plate on, you align it up. You're relying strictly on your holes and the screws to hold that plate in. With that interlocking T that's cut into it, think of it like a Lego. When that goes on there, it's locked in there. So even if you should happen to back a screw out at some point for some reason, that thing is not going to shift on you. Right. It's not going to move. Right. It's not going to do anything for you. It's just locked in place, and it's not going to go anywhere. It's really nicely machined. The, the, the other real advantage to having a prep like that is that, um, let's say two years from now, the way optics are changing, like phones, like everything, computers, there's going to be new optics, and all of a sudden somebody's going to come with an optic that may not be the footprint that you originally had cut in your slide. Right. This is a generic cut. It means all you need to do is go get a new plate at $140 rather than remachining the slide. Right. And so once you've paid for the prep, the prep is the prep. Now, again, you can migrate to other, other optics as you may want to. So it's, I think it's very um, much more versatile than just uh, um, being specific to the optic, uh, the optic prep. Now we notice that you know a lot of the slides here. You got a flat top machined right into it. Uh, we've you just got either slab side like this one here, or you also have a chamfered side on your slides here, so more rolls down into the into the frame. Yes. Your front sights are beaver tail. Are these uh, proprietary sights that no. are on there? Or are they? No, uh, it's a it's a classic uh, 1911 or uh, Novak cut. Oh, okay. You know, Novak no dovetail. And um, yeah, so this is a kind of a classic slide design. We call it flat top tactical. And then, then we have a bunch of um, full dust covers, which um, a lot of people weren't making. So very few, unless you went to custom, were making that in the in the double stack range. Yeah, great, great call. Very few people recognize that. The chamfer on the slide is everything we do. We always do that to our single stacks. So they come down and they match the slide. Yeah, it's nice. It eliminates so the frame. That's the frame. And you got that nice thin frame on it, so it, it's yeah. nice. You don't have a sharp ridge on there that exactly. you're going to wear down or get holes to wear yeah. on or anything and else. Especially when you're in a full grip, you know, you don't feel that slide at all as you're shooting. Yeah, you're not going to have your finger right in the slide because I like, yeah. you know, especially in 1911s, you're going to have your thumb up there by the by the safety anyway. You know, you and your support thumb. You're not. You're riding above it, so you're not going to have any any issues with the reciprocation of the slide. And we also, it's like speaking of your sights, you also notice that everything is serrated on the back behind yep. the U notch, so you don't right. get any sun glare on it. Right. The the serrations these guys have put in in here, they they do not look nearly as aggressive as they feel. The grip texture on here is just you. There's nothing to being able to grab a hold of that. You know, even though they look rounded and smooth, you still get a really nice purchase on yeah, it, which good. is Thank nice. You. Thank you. And you're running ambidextrous safeties on these. And when you got uh, your pick rails, you got two, three, two, three, I got a four, and then we got a six slotted yeah. model over there. So you really cover <laughs> covering the gamut with the with the slots on it. Uh, we know you got magwells on some of these, but even on your the one is that you still have a nice so that's a flush fit it's a nice flush fit there and we got here on this frame we notice that you got a nice a nice bevel around it but it's also not a sharp bevel it's rounded on the inside as well right, right. you know and i was over here was waiting just you know put magazines and i was like wow that, that's nice and easy <laughs> i was doing it with my eyes closed just so i could see what it felt like and you just can't miss so that gun's our compact double stack and so what we did is that with a mag out, that's a compact grip. That's a quarter inch shorter than a standard grip. So if you were to set this up next to it, these grips with the mag in, they're the exact same size. So it's the, the mag actually completes the grip to make it a full size grip, okay? The difference is you don't have a mag hanging down below it like this. All right. That's why we called that our compact grip.
Yeah, now most compact guns I always had a problem with every time I wanted to drop a magazine out, what I'd always found I have to release one or two fingers from my grip hand yeah. in order to get the magazine to eject out of this. Now I got rather big hands and my hand is on this thing and I'm still able to not only eject the magazine without letting go of the grip, but I also don't have to readjust my grip in order to hit the mag release. It's, an, it's not overly extended, but it's still right where I need it to be, so I don't see anybody having a problem, you know, getting to that. That's, yeah, now I notice these are also reversible for the mag release? No, no, these are only one side. Only one side on these? Yeah. Okay. All right, so you got you left-handed guys learn how to use your right finger. There You'll you be go. all right. And that gun actually features one of our latest things is the, our, our porting. And so this has got a... This yeah, this is, this is what was what drew me right off the bat. Yeah, so this is a, this is a three and a half inch, nine millimeter with a, with a chunk port uh, in the barrel and then a ported slide. And so this is just amazing uh, when you shoot it. Nine millimeter is already a great shooting gun. Okay, right. 1911, double stacks, mitigate recoil, fantastic. But you go to that porting and it doesn't even make an effort to muzzle move. You know, it's just, so once we did it in the compact and we had to do it, we had to do it in the, in the full size. So that's a five inch um, with the same porting uh, in the barrel and the slide. And again, like you would think, you know, what do you need that in the nine? It is just incredible how the the slide I mean the frame not when you're shooting it it doesn't even try to come up all you do is you feel it go bing 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 I've shot guns that are that are compensated with a big compensator hanging out the front and it's the exact same feel yeah now you a couple of people I watched a couple of videos that got picked up on this because you guys only made the announcement about this particular last design week. last week yeah. and a few people were like why is the ports in front of the sights? Well, I have a couple of ported uh, guns where they're behind the sights, and after about 10 rounds of shooting 45 through it, you don't have a front sight anymore. Because if, you, if you're running you know, fiber optic on it, you're either going to melt it away, or you're going to wind up covering it with so much soot you can't see the damn thing anyway. Having it behind it really makes a, a nice difference that it's ported without having to worry about, like I said, having that compensator on the end that every time you want to change something clean your gun maintain it you have to go taking everything apart realigning everything after it and uh you know that just makes it nice i can't wait to get one of these things out to the range i want to i want to i want to see that sewing machine like movement that uh, that i have been told comes with more yeah. on one of these guns <laughs> but uh now we see you got a variety of colors on on this thing what else do you guys offer as far as colors this is just uh up to the the whim of the consumer. We're a, we're a Cerakote certified applicator, so we pretty much have the whole, you know, options within Cerakote. Um, but there's a lot of like standard colors. I think if you get, I, I we give people the option, and a lot of them come right back to sniper gray or you know burnt bronze, tungsten, you know, kind of the standards within when you search guns, you know, what 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 do, what do people haven't finished in? Um, but it is that's. One of the things we do with every gun is every gun is pretty much spec'd out. You, you decide the caliber, the size, the grip, the, the sight system, and then at the end you pick out the Cerakote. That's why this is a multi-cam, gray black multi-cam, M81 camo. Um, this is a thing we call, it's called Riptile, uh, very cool design. Um, so th there's, again, we're thinking if some, we call it production custom. So it's not necessarily custom custom where every part is fitted to the, it's production custom. You pick the configuration, how you want it, then we go at it and try mm -hmm. and deliver it within four weeks. Yeah, it's like it's like the way ordering a car used to be. You mm -hmm. could pick out every little thing that you wanted and nothing that you didn't need. Right. And you're only paying for what you're going to get. Exactly. exactly. Right. Now what about uh, in the raw? Do you guys do anything as far as in, in the raw without the Cerakote? Is that an option or is everything going to be... I, we pretty much want to send it out finished. Okay. Yeah, we've had a couple where we sent them out raw. It just doesn't work right. And 
it's better to just let us go through the entire process, make the gun up, ready to go. Hmm. And then if somebody wants to redo it, a couple people, I, I, they give me the right colors, and what they're going to do, they're not going to re-seracote everything. They're going to take the slide and do a second color or right. you know something like that. Yeah, so if you want something that looks like a stainless finish gun, then you, you're going to go for the, the stainless finish Cerakote on it. And let's face it, it's going to be easier to maintain. You're not going to worry about scratching it up so much. You're not going to worry about... Uh, you know, have any rust fouling or anything else, uh, you know, right. when you're getting these things now. Uh, full length guide rods? Full length guide rods. Full length guide rods in all of them. And uh, we use Wilson Combat um, internals so that you know, people can depend on them. Also replaceable, you know. Um, we use fusion triggers. Uh, it's, it's a, we try and stay in the, in the products that we, one, can get consistently and, uh, um, People have confidence in them. Yeah, cool. Well, like I said, these things, any shape that you want, any size that you want, these guys make. I also noticed you guys had a couple of long slides on a bench back there, so I'm waiting to see what one of those things looks like, having that nice long slide. Now, that's all. the long slide's also going to be ported for the front? Yeah, we're going to we're gonna be able to do that. We've got a long, we've got a six inch out there. We're building for somebody a, a six inch, 10 millimeter, and that that was going to be the next question about caliber or caliber availability. We know nine millimeter and forty five. Uh, I see this photo right here. This is chambered forty Smith and Wesson. So you're going to do ten millimeter as well. We do ten mil ten millimeter right now. This is a five inch ten millimeter. Um, right now, if you feel that spring, you'll know it's a ten millimeter. And, oh yeah. And um, so ten uh, commander uh, tens really only in commander and full size. Uh, we do compacts in 9 and 45. We've done 40s for comp uh, competitors uh, who want to compete with a 40 caliber. Um, we actually have a gun out there that's a, a 38 Super. Was that, gonna, that was what I was going to ask you. I know the 38 Super is getting we quite did. popular among the competition circuit. We did a 38 Super. One of the cool things that because we're the only ones to do a single stack, in USA, USPSA competition, you know, the single stack division, um, it has to be a um, 1911 you know, platform and a bushing barrel um, and uh, we're the only ones that make that design with the same style as a double stack. So the recoil impulse is different than a traditional 1911 because it's going back and forth. So on target faster, on target more, more repetitively. And those, those guys that shoot you know, different divisions, they may go from a double stack to a single stack, then they have to go through a couple of stages to get back into the recoil impulse of each gun. All right, but if your muscle memory is the same from one right to the it's next, not, you're, you're, not gonna, so you're not gonna suffer any losses right, from that. Right, right. All right, well, this is fantastic. So we're gonna run a bunch of footage over here. There's some, they have a really cool CNC machine in the back of five axis that we got some video of. We're gonna roll that too, that stuff's pretty cool. Uh, if these guys want to see, uh, catch up on where they can get one of these, how do they order one for themselves? So go, go to coastandarms.com and, and right there at the bottom, if nothing else, just uh, do the contact bill, we'll get right back to you. And remember, this is an American company, American parts, American made right here in North Carolina, so, you know, support your hometown people. Uh, let's, uh, you know, let's make them proud. Get you one of these things now. You want more, get more, and it's, <laughs> it's Cosent arms, not Cosaint, not Cosante, uh, none of the, you know, don't mistake it with another company or anything else, it's Cosent arms. Thank you. So, Greg, thank you very much Thanks, for having Mike. us out really here today. It. Uh, next thing, let's try and sling some lead. So, you, you guys, as always, be safe and shoot straight. Cool, get a little edit for... Okay, bonus footage. <laughs> this is where we run the real little extra bonus footage. We didn't talk about magazine capacity on these things, so let's run through them real quick. Yeah. On your compact version, double stack, seventeen plus one. Seventeen point plus one. Nine millimeter full size is twenty plus one. Twenty plus one. So now you're into uh, canic territory as far as the abundance uh, of on rounds. Ten millimeter full size, it's sixteen plus one. Sixteen plus one in ten mil on a double stack. Right. If that was a forty-five. It would be 14 plus 1. Well, you, that's that's a pretty significant amount of firepower right yeah. there. Yeah. And your single stacks, of course, you know, 6 yeah. and 1, 7 and 1, 8 right. and 1. Right. Right. And then unless you're going to step up to 10 rounders and stuff right. like that. Right. And all of your magazines, uh, is there any proprietary concerns with the magazines? No, uh, uh, they all, 
uh, all the standard double stack 2011 style magazines fit. Yeah, that's pretty cool. All right, so once again, uh, Cosaint Arms, that's C O S A I N T A R M S dot com. Visit them today. The link will be down in the, in the description. And we're going to be doing a full page article on the L1F.us. Make sure you visit us there and sign up for the premium membership as well. Get that done. Do it. Don't make me come over there. All right. You guys be safe.